it's Warp Jester. Welcome back to another episode of Warp Jester Does Minecraft SMP on the Ball Rocket Gaming Server. Uh, today's going to be a bit of a, a talkie. Uh, I've been doing a lot of uh, off camera work to get things cleaned up and functional. Um, and uh, also taking a little bit of time to do some creative work I'm going to show you here. So I want to get a chance to show that guys that uh, we are back at the Forge Town <laughs> once again. Uh, it's always a little bit of uh, refinement and adjustment and whatnot, and uh, you know, even though this server's been around for a little bit, it's still a work in progress, and we're still learning a lot about it. So uh, let me go ahead and get you up to speed on what's going on here. Um, just a minor thing here, uh, we have split the lines a little further so that the trains can get well past their processing before they're turned back on and take off. The reason being is we're having some problems with the train collisions right here. They actually T-bone each other. Um, so that was working out too well. So we've done some basic logic here. And the way we've done logic is a uh, uh, simple system. You've got lane 1 here, lane 2 there. And then you've got your outbound track heading out here. So the way this is set up is lane 1 here is uh, basically monitoring the outbound track. If there's nobody on here then this guy can go. Lane 2 here is actually monitoring both the outbound track as well as lane 1. So if there's a train on here, if there's a train on lane 1 or on outbound, lane 2 will get held up here. Um, and this is a simple system of, you can see over here we've got a controller and two receivers. So one receiver is connected to the outbound, one receiver is connected to the lane 1, and as long as both of those are green, this controller is green, and that controller controls this receiver right here which turns on that track so that's probably the biggest difference uh, we have done a quick change up here we ran out of fertilizer so this uh, whole system just takes forever to grow uh, so when the forest train comes in the harvest train it tends to sit here for a while waiting for the trees to grow one <laughs> sapling at a time uh, we are trying to remedy that in a couple of ways um, RG is actually working on bees right now to try to get a uh, appetite B we can use. Uh, likewise, because this thing really wasn't going, because it wasn't really grown very fast, it wasn't using much power. So the problem is, is that the uh, train will come in, has no fertilizer to drop off because we're out. Uh, nothing's being really harvested, so no power is being used, so it has very little power to give, if any. And then it's not really picking up much in the way of sludge because nothing's working. So this train here would come in, bypass everything, head right back out come back in, bypass everything, go right back out. Just back and forth between here and the other town. Uh, <laughs> so it really just kind of a waste of coal, a waste of time. So we've, at least for for a little while here, we've set it, uh, these energy unloaders up uh, with a wait till empty. Uh, basically, as it implies, it's actually going to hold this cart here until it can actually empty this cart. So you can see right now it's still got some power left in it. So let's just hang on to the cart, and when it finally empties this cart, then it'll let it take off. So, basically using the car as kind of a external battery, if you will. So, uh, that's pretty much it for now on this. I'm going to go ahead and shoot over to uh, the hub town, and I'll uh, pick up where we left off there. <laughs> and welcome back. Uh, someone's driving back over here to uh, main hub town. Uh, here's the uh, Bowtie data, data Center. Um, so a couple of things we've uh, changed up here. Um, not a whole lot's changed over here. We did change out the lines uh, so that these two lines here are dedicated lines now. So one line works for Ruark's train, one line works for the Harvest train, and then we have this one dedicated line from before where we have the uh, sled train coming through. So we've got three trains running on our, our uh, system right now, so everyone has their own... Uh, line to work with for the moment here. It's not efficient, it's not a good setup per se, um, but this is really kind of a hodgepodge because it, it, it just keeps evolving, keeps evolving. <laughs> and so you just kind of slap together and make it work how best you can. That's why we've got weird bends in it and all kinds of weird stuff. So <laughs> um, This is, however, temporary and it is actually coming down pretty soon here because I actually need the space to expand out the uh, power plant. So that's kind of a big deal. Um, and actually, all oh, this is going to be moving over here. Uh, so, as we pass by, you probably saw it. Um, the power plant itself, I'm going to expand out that little space, that little bit of land that's still left. 
basically what that platform is on. Hello, Rain. Uh, that's actually going to be uh, expanded out and is going to have basically the output, if you will, for this side of town. So we're going to put like a, a high voltage power uh, power line or tower running the power out. Little big fat lines are going to come over the bay here. And they're going to drop into this area. And this area right here is going to be a power substation for uh, the industrial area. And so what I've done here is I've actually run or extended the lines, or will be extending the lines, as you can see, all the way down here. And then from here, we'll actually have different spurs coming off for different things. So any trains coming down that are power trains, basically, will cut off down here. They'll come in and get uh, run down one of these three lines and then basically filled up on power and then head back out. Uh, the organization and, and logic of this is the same exact uh, logic we talked about over there with the uh, uh, priority of one line versus another. It's not the best thing in the world simply because um, if you were to have, say, you know, this line waits for these two to be clear as well as the output, this one waits for this one and the output to be clear, that means if trains keep coming in on this line here, one train gets stuck here. It's not ideal. I'm going to end up doing some logic later for it. Unfortunately, we don't have the newer uh, box that... Uh, Covert Jaguar added to Railcraft that actually enables you to do basically a round robin. So we have to do that manually with some uh, uh, redstone logic. So fun things to look forward to. So anyways, we're we're, we're gonna basically take this 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 hodgepodge multi system and, and split it up into proper systems that are a little more towards what's gonna be permanent. So we're gonna have a power substation here for power. Uh, we're gonna have um, Sludge drop off over there. So we've got a little sludge tank. We've actually got a little spur line going out. So we drop, <laughs> drop off sludge. Um, this is actually the water purification plant over here that Turgo's been working on. So I went ahead and ran rails towards it. I'm not sure exactly what he's going to do or how he's going to do it. So I'll just kind of uh, terminate it in there for the moment here. The one last one, however, we got, as you can see right here, is coming off the side of uh, the data center and as you can see coming into here and this is going to be our item drop off and item pickup so when trains come in here we're going to have some logic and just for right now because things are so simple because there's very few trains running i'm just going to cheat and basically have um some routing switches here and this first routing switch is a bypass so we're going to have this whole section right here be drop off and that section be pickup. So if we have trains coming in, we're just going to have them all colorized specifically for whatever they're doing, whatever they need. So right now, each input and each output line, if you will, are going to be dedicated to one specific train. So when Ruark's train comes in, if he's manufacturing something and wants to drop that something off here, then we'll have routing logic in this switch uh, that will allow them to pass by and we'll have you know, one of these three lines be dedicated to Ruark's trains. So he'll pull in and unload, and then when they come back out, if they have nothing to pick up, they'll just take this little bypass line out. If they do, then they'll be pushed over to here, and they'll hit whatever proper lane is theirs, and they'll be filled up with whatever it is they need. Uh, so, again, just more rail logic. We're getting things kind of sorted out and starting to gear ourselves towards that logistics we've been <laughs> fighting to get to for so long. Um, so that's a lot of fun. Um, so that's basically where we're at right now with Real Logic. It's going to be a little while before I have all this ready to go, just because I got to get every last little thing, even little details like this right here. A train comes down this line here and has to turn to go this way. It's cutting across the tracks. So I got to put in logic um, and holding tracks everywhere along the way to ensure that. Uh, you know, trains don't make a left turn and then cut across another track and get T-boned. So there's a lot of logic that goes into it. So this is going to be a lot like uh, that intersection uh, where trains are. So that's going to be a real blast. <laughs> um, so that, that that's pretty much it for the uh, the train aspect. Um, the one other thing I wanted to show you, like I was talking about earlier, is um, uh, a little project I've been working on. Oh, here's my uh, greeting center. I haven't done anything with this. I have an idea of what I want to do with this. Uh, that finally came to me. And a lot of this was just kind of a, I don't know what to do, so I'm just going to kind of build and see what happens. And, you know, sometimes 
your innovative uh, and, and creative juices run dry, and when they do, it, it, it it's a lot like trying to squeeze the last little bit of toothpaste out of a tube. You just gotta stop and you know wait, and wait wait for the new tube to show up. <laughs> uh, so I, I just my ideas for that. I will be looking into that a little further, but for the moment here, the one bit of uh, inspiration I have had is a home. <laughs> So here we are. So this is my uh, my house I'm building. Um, it's a little more than a shell right now, literally. I'm uh, building it kind of piece by piece as I go and building it out in kind of in a way I like, the way I look of it. I did see, I kind of look up some pictures of like a Tudor style homes to get some inspiration um, of how I want this house to look. And I'm kind of running with it and kind of adapting it for my own enjoyment and, and looks and whatnot. Um, the roof here is uh, carpenter's block, so we have that nice smooth um, look instead of the stairs. I am going to put something on this. I haven't figured out what yet. I do like some of the logs, but the problem is is logs have two sides to them. They have the bark side and they have the, the core side, and I don't want the core side showing on this kind of stuff, so it's going to be a bit of a a trial and tribulation, so to speak, in terms of getting things to look right. So we'll see how that turns out. I'm going to keep working on this. This is kind of my focus at the moment here just because I've been really enjoying it. And I've been doing a little bit here and then taking a break, go work on some real logic, and then coming back to it, um, kind of get everything sorted out here. So this has been a real blast. Um, this is kind of a big deal for me, I'll be honest with you. Simply because, uh, for any of you that's ever, <laughs> ever worked, we play with me, talk to me, or seen any of the past videos, um, for all the servers I've ever been on, I usually dive straight into big logistics projects. Most commonly, you know, rail lines or sorting systems or whatever else. And because those are just all consuming, I just never get around to actually making anything for myself. I've never built a house worth speaking about. It usually it's just a, you know, a rectangle hovel <laughs> at best. Um, I mean, so much so that uh, the last server I was on, uh, I actually made a comical value out of uh, picking a plot of land we had in town and building a two-by-one home built out of... Um, micro blocks <laughs> so uh it was really a unspectacular uh home on <laughs> dog house <laughs> so this this is kind of a big deal for me to actually go through and uh um actually take some time to actually build a nice house for myself uh that's pretty much it i'll be honest with you it's not not big not big night tonight for me uh it's actually pretty late <laughs> if i get a little bit of recording in uh, Tox has been busy, he started a new job, so he hasn't had all, uh, as much time to spend with me, so I'm um, a little bit behind on uh, content, and I usually do a lot of stuff with him, so I want to try to get something pounded out here. One question for you guys, is, uh, input is going to be on the window style. Um, just so you know, that the look I'm going with is going to be kind of a Tudor style, so we're going to have the white and uh, um, frame look like this, and also some brick look like this. So that's kind of the color motif, and probably gonna have like a dark, uh, dark wood roof of some kind. But windows, there's two options here. I really kind of like it. I can't really decide which one to go with. There's this uh, uh, they call it ornate Japanese glass here, and then we have this guy here, which is just Japanese glass. Kind of looks like you know glass, a little bit of a shine or reflection on it. Um, I, I, I'm really torn. I don't know. I, I kind of like the look of this glass better by itself, but that said, when I'm looking at the house, kind of step back from it. It seems like this one, this this uh, regular Japanese glass looks better. But I want to get your input. So if you're willing, please do uh, uh, leave a comment down below and uh, let me know what you think about the glass itself. And uh, uh, you know, see if you. Uh, See if you have any inspiration for that. Um, likewise, <laughs> as I always say, please do leave a like. It certainly does help me out. Again, I hate the system, 
but it is what it is, and it really does help me out in terms of letting me know what you guys are into. It also helps page ranking a little bit, which is a big help because more people get exposed, and it's nice. Uh, and of course, as always, if you do enjoy seeing builds like this, and I will keep you updated on builds like this, uh, please do feel free to uh, hit the subscribe button and uh, join me. I do try to put out a video at least every week. Uh, you know, there are times when uh, I can belt out, you know, two or more a week, and there's times when you might see one <laughs> come out in a month. It just really depends on uh, what's happening in my world, and uh, as you know, everybody knows, uh, there's always the uh, the rule of life, which is reality comes before a game. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, I do what I can when I can. Um, but certainly do subscribe, and as, uh, as I can get content posted, you'll... Uh, you get a chance to enjoy it, so that's always fun. Um, beyond that, guys, as always, uh, please feel free to uh, join us on the Ball Rocket uh, Gaming dot com website. It's a great place to talk to myself as well as the other BRGers, and we're always looking for more people to join us. Uh, if you have an interest in the server and playing modern Minecraft, please feel free to stop by, uh, sign up on the forums, Ball Rocket Gaming dot com slash forms and uh poke your head in sign up and say hi and uh we'll get a chance to talk with you and then uh, see if you're a good fit for us and we're a good fit for you and uh, who knows maybe you'll be on here with us playing <laughs> we always really do enjoy the opportunity to get to know new people so i always like that again guys thank you very much have a great night take care bye